Welcome. Welcome, welcome. welcome. This is going to be a program that just, it'll top everything. You don't want to miss this program. We are really looking forward to it today, aren't we, sweetheart? Yes, we are. And Aldrich and James are with us. Now, you may not know them, but you've probably heard them someplace. They're from the Philippines and uh, such a marvelous talent. And it isn't really the talent as much as the anointing. That's right. It's going to be beautiful. And Joe and Cindy Hurston are with us from Air Mobile Ministries and uh, they're going to be talking about this thing right here and more than Amazing. that, they're going to be talking about maybe a little about going to Cuba because I've been with Joe. We've been in Cuba, and this, we're just going to have a great time yeah. talking <laughs> about the miraculous works of God. Yes, amen. So amen. you stay tuned, really stay tuned. I mean, don't even get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> Just stay there and listen. And we're going to start off with Aldrich and James from the Philippines, from Colonel, what was the name of that? I don't remember the town they're from. <laughs> General Santos. And uh, they, they, we're going to actually interview them. We're going to have a time squeeze here to get everything in. But they're going to sing right now, Dance With My Father. Sins. 
This is Joe Hurston, by the way, and Cindy. <laughs> Bob Aldrich is now 16 years old. We met him when he was 15. Uh -huh. And James is now 19. And of course, he was 18 when we first met them in the Philippines. Oh, marvelous. Very talented. Marvelous. And they're more than talented. And it's mm -hmm. a great anointing on his life. Yeah. The presence of God is there, no question. Yeah, we're going to talk to them in just a little while um, to see about their Christianity, what it means to us. Um, but right now, we're going to talk about, well, let's talk about Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> they we go have way had, back. We, we, have, <laughs> we have history. <laughs> what an excellent adventure that was. Was huh? this, what, 30 years ago? Oh, yes. Well, it was right as the Berlin Wall had fallen, and Fidel was, was hunkered down and just, just built a steel cage around he and Cuba. And uh, remember, Bob, I was flying you to Alabama, and, and you said, Joe, what about Cuba? And I remember I gave the plane to the co-pilot, <laughs> and I slid the seat back, and I said, Bob, let's go to Cuba. And remember, it yes. was out over the Gulf of Mexico That's right. that, that, that that trip began. And then, wow, mm. did, did God put a mission together or what? He did. Yep. And we even brought a Cuban with us. Yes, we did. Matter of fact, his father had been in prison for a number of years. Right. And just his going back in put him into danger. That mm. is correct. Yeah, yeah. We, we had quite a plane load there, didn't yeah. we? Well, tell the viewers why you went into Cuba. Well, <laughs> we had a plane load of the Jesus film. <laughs> and with that, we had the screen, we had the generator, we had the amplifier, the full sound system, and the film itself. And bringing that in at that time was classified as anti-revolutionary, mm -hmm. which would instantly end you into prison. And we had a, a, a Cuban doctor who had agreed to meet us at the airport at a certain hour, and he would clear everything for us. Well, getting out of Miami was a huge problem. Customs didn't show up, delay after delay after delay. And I must tell you, I was, my Christianity was been sorely tested <laughs> because I knew that if we landed late, that doctor wouldn't be there and we would be in Cuba with a plane load of anti-revolutionary stuff. <laughs> so I looked at my watch and I looked at the time and slowly it was ticking and we were running out of time. And by the time we finally got cleared, I knew that, I knew that we were in grave danger because the doctor, we had told him to stay only a certain time and then leave and we were approaching that time. And as we were taxiing, this was the straw that almost broke my back. <laughs> we got cleared to finally take off and I was next in line and the tower told me, hold your position. And I went, I'm ready to go. And he let another airplane in front of me. I was furious. I don't think I cussed Bob, but I thought about <laughs> cussing. <laughs> Maybe I cussed under my breath. But he let that airplane go and I was just furious. And then he cleared me to go, and then another airplane, just like the first airplane that I went, was behind me. So there were three airplanes, one, two, and three. And we were flying along, and there's a certain intersection. When you get to that intersection, you're going to Cuba. So I noted that that first airplane that jumped in front of line 
was going to Cuba. And I went, he's going to Cuba. And then just being aware, the airplane behind us was going to Cuba too. So the three small airplanes are flying to Cuba. Very unusual. So as we approached, he landed, and then I landed, then the other airplane landed. Military surrounded us. They had never done that before. Well, tell, tell about when they came out to greet us. That's right. The military came, totally surrounded the airplane, took all of the equipment without saying a word, and then the way they have you reposition your airplane, a military man got in the airplane and he puts a gun right in your ribs and tells you where to move the airplane. So what? I was repositioning the airplane. Wow. When we got into the main terminal, I looked for the doctor and he was gone, he wasn't there. And all of the equipment had come into the terminal, but the doctor wasn't there. And I was praying, I said, Lord, what do we say? What do we do? There's nobody here to clear us through. And Jane, I remembered Brother Andrew, the one time where he just left the Bibles on the seat, and mm -hmm. they said, what do you have? And he said, there it is, and they let him through. Well, when they asked me, they said, what do you have? And I said, I have film equipment. And it was the Jesus film, anti-revolutionary. And he said, you have the film equipment? I said, I have the film equipment. And then Bob was standing there, we were all praying, and I've got, I've got a network television president with me. <laughs> we would have been in prison for years. I mean, this is like the worst of the worst. And then the head man said, you have the film equipment. I said, I have the film equipment. He said, you can go. And you should have seen us as we as we left there. We felt like Rottweilers were were chasing <laughs> us out of there. Remember, Bob grabbed part of the equipment. We all grabbed the equipment and we rushed out. I had the film. You had the film. You literally had the film. And wow. I came around one of their booths. And the guy saw me coming, and he looked away and he walked away. And I just walked straight through. Just walked through, like, like they were, like we were invisible. Well, let me tell you the rest of the story. This is a Paul Harvey rest Paul of the Harvey. story. Paul Harvey. <laughs> After we got through and we made stops and made sure we weren't followed and we delivered the Jesus film. Remember, we went through these doors and then drove down and we and we delivered the Jesus film, the first ever Jesus film equipment into Cuba, in a in a basement. I mean, it was like hidden. And we got back to the hotel and we went, what happened? How did that happen? Listen to what happened. Airplane A and airplane C. And you were, were B. And we were B, <laughs> but sandwiched between the two, were carrying in film equipment for the summer games. Wow. So the Lord had delayed and delayed and delayed until those two airplanes got into perfect position. And the three of us went there and we all had film equipment. So we said, you have the film equipment? I said, I have the film <laughs> equipment. They said, you can go. It was, Only the Lord. It was perfect. Like that. split second timing. <laughs> and I found out that even to this day, Cubans tell that story as to how the Jesus film came into Cuba. It oh, was yeah. a miracle. I remember taking it to a Baptist college. Yes, or it something. was a seminary, remember? Seminary. Yeah. Those doors opened up, we ran in there, the doors closed, <laughs> and then we quickly got them and we and we hid the equipment away mm -hmm. and we were just amazed, but the Lord had arranged it with split second perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they showed that all over Cuba. It's still talked about to this day. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I wonder how many people have come to know Jesus Only because God of knows. that film. That's right. The word shall not return unto him void. That's right. Yeah. Wow. That was that was one of our adventures. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good adventure I hear with that. this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy, they've had many, haven't they? Yes. <laughs> well, well, you got pictures? Uh, we do. We do. And what what is this thing here? You know, Bob, I've been doing relief work for uh, almost 40 years now, and following any disaster, it doesn't make any difference what it is, whether it's an earthquake or a hurricane, typhoon, flood, no matter what it is, people need clean water. And we fly little bitty airplanes, little bitty airplanes. You can't carry very much water in an airplane. Well, a very dear friend of mine who I just love, and he, he invented this module which, which does the same thing as God does, using ozone and UV to kill all the bacteria and viruses. So over the last 10 years, we have developed this machine, 
We now have 900 of these machines in 44 countries, and we've been following every major disaster. It can take sewer water. We could have sewer right in this bucket, run it through there, and then we could do surgery with you with that water after we finish. It, it sets up in a minute. It's so portable, we can carry it on board a commercial airliner and put it in the overhead bin. Don't even have to check it as luggage, carry on. Yeah. And, uh, and then it just runs and runs and runs. And um, this has been one of the most exciting things I've ever done because we're able to bring clean water. And when you, f when you go into a disaster and bring clean water, people's hearts just open so wide. I mean, you know, I've been often asked, who sent you here? And I'll go, well, Jesus sent us here. Jesus yeah. said, I was thirsty and he gave me to drink. And that's, right. that's this beautiful little machine. Mm. So you hear about a disaster and you go. We now do. the Philippines had a disaster. Oh, I just remember, was this last year? They had the- Yes, year ago. It, was, it was the largest, it was the largest typhoon, the largest storm in recorded history to make landfall. It was mm. a monster storm. We ended up going three times and we brought yeah. 45 of these machines into their 15 and 15 and 15. And that was where we met Aldrich and Jane. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> and did you just meet them on the street? Oh, Cindy's got that story. <laughs> Go ahead, Cindy. Well, when their video um, on YouTube went viral, it was the one called Rooftops, he sang it. And it came through Facebook. And when I saw this, I had to share it with everyone. It was just touched my heart, just melted my heart and I said my heart just flowed out my eyes because it just made me cry. Well I shared it with Joe and he watched it and said honey I think those boys are Filipino and I said I think you're right so I messaged them through Facebook and I asked them if they would be willing to meet us in the Philippines while we bring water purifiers for our last mission over there our, our next one and would they sing and entertain the survivors while we give water out, and they said yes. <laughs> and wow. so they, they met us in the Philippines. Philippines, a big place. Yes. Oh, this, this is remarkable. General Santos is the extreme south. They got on a jet and flew one hour, which is about 500 miles, to Cebu Island. Then from Cebu, this is a 15-year-old, an 18-year-old, and their older sisters <laughs> that their mother wouldn't let them travel without <laughs> and uh, because they were protectors. And, and then they got on a ferry and crossed high seas. And matter of fact, a ferry had just capsized because the storm was still yeah. all stirred up. Yeah. And then we, we met them. And when we met them, we, we asked them right then and there, we said, you don't even know us, and you've traveled all the way through the Philippines to come be with us. Why did you do that? And they said, well, we prayed about it, and God said to go. Uh. <laughs> That's their heart. Simple. <laughs> yeah. God said to go. Mm. So that's how we met Aldrich and James. Yeah. Oh. Well, they're going to be singing for us again in just a moment. Yeah. Right now we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we've got so many adventures we can talk <laughs> about. <laughs> it's incredible. But uh, Aldrich and James are coming back to sing Rooftop. Now, I'm not sure what this song is about. Ooh, you're, about you to find you're, find you're about to find Get out. Get ready. <laughs> Rooftop, Aldrich and James. To contact Air Mobile Ministries, please call 1-321-567-0332 or send an email to servingathirstyworld at gmail.com. You can also connect with Air Mobile Ministries on Facebook and Twitter. The Christian Television Network it is all about proclaiming the gospel. All over the world. It's about connecting you with your local community. It's about family and everything that affects the home. CTN is about keeping you fit. In spirit, soul, and body.
to share this love Trying to proclaim it from the rooftops. That's right. And we're going to be talking to them in just a little while. But, uh, Joe, how many of these did you say 900? We've put 900 into 44 countries, and we've only just begun. You've just and begun. I have a feeling you and I are going to be going out there bringing some clean water because <laughs> the adventures still lie ahead. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm recruiting you. Yes. <laughs> Maybe we could take our helicopter someplace and indeed take yeah. some of those. In fact, you can land any place. That's exactly right. <laughs> and I've already done the calculations. I think you can put about two million pounds of water in that helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the formula, don't we? Yes. <laughs> we do. Well, tell them what they need for this to operate. Well, it, the, the machine runs on regular AC if you have it but also being European or global, we have all the plugs, so it runs on 110 or 240, mm -hmm. and 50 cycle, 60 cycle, but it also runs on 12 volts. Many times, and we've done this many times, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll power it with motorcycles. See, following disasters, motorcycles are real easy to protect. I mean, you can literally tie one up in a tree and then let it down after the, <laughs> after the flood passes. But the motorcycle battery will run this machine for hours and hours and hours. So there's almost an unlimited supply of power to run these units. And then if mm. push gets to shove and all the batteries are dead and nothing will run, we have solar panels. And that'll run them beautifully. That's totally unlimited and that's... It really is unlimited. That's God's 
Unlimitless. Unlimitless. Is that a good word? <laughs> Unlimitless. Unlimited. <laughs> Unlimited supply. Unlimited power. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Of everything. Unlimited power. I hadn't thought of that. That's good. What were you? Were I was going to ask you about Haiti because when Haiti had the horrible earthquake, you were one of the first. You were. You said you were the first plane to land. Yes. <laughs> Jane, it was you a day. You, it was a day that I'll never forget. About five o'clock on January the 12th, a very uh, brave missionary, a lady that rescues kids. We call her Rambo in the blue dress. <laughs> <laughs> her name was Barbara. She called me up and she was she was very upset. I could tell. She. I could hear noise and turmoil in the background. She was under a table and the earthquake was happening. I heard the earthquake. Oh she said, goodness. Joe, what's happening? What's happening? And I said, I don't know, Barbara. I don't know, but we'll be there. And, and we were the first private plane that flew in the next day, January the 13th. And that's a day I'll never forget because that's my birthday. So, oh. <laughs> but it was, it was the saddest experience, I think, of my entire life. We landed in a country of, of nine million people and and over 250,000 people died just like that and you literally you literally penetrated a wall of grief mm. and the sounds the smells the sights that we saw I've just tried to forget it was it was terrible but we had water purifiers and we were able at one point, we had nine machines running. I think we have a picture of that. And I'm holding up my nine machines running, and we were providing water to about 10,000 people a day wow. out of our little village there, just with those nine machines. Well, maybe we could mm. show some of those pictures. Yeah. Now, yeah, I believe so. When they, <laughs> when, when they pop up, I'll give the caption. Yeah, they're there. there. That's our little airplane right there. I call it the little donkey. And the upper left-hand side of that shot, you'll see how tightly packed that airplane My. is. And um, this is in Japan. Cindy and I were there immediately following the 9.4 earthquake. And they had a 60-foot tsunami. Imagine that. And you remember okay. the Fukushima power plant that let yes. up all that radiation? Yes. Well, this machine takes out radiation as well. Yeah. My. This is my Cindy and I delivering a unit into Jock Mel. And, um, Haiti. Haiti, mm -hmm. exactly. And, and just what a joy it is. Now, mm -hmm. this was Cindy and I praying for people that were living in the middle of the road. There was a little island that went down the middle of this road in Haiti, and they, they were living inside of that little island. On the median. Yeah, yeah. the children would step out, and, and, and a number of kids were killed by trucks coming through. It, it was terrible. Oh, my but, goodness. And this is, this is in our village. Uh, just giving the children clean water. And I think the next shot, if I'm not mistaken, we'll see if that's the one. No, this is in the tent city. And that little baby was just born right mm -hmm. there. Oh, little yeah. baby Kati. And she was only a few hours old. And There's your nine. <laughs> there, there are my nine units running, and I'm, I'm wow. holding up nine fingers. And what I'm so glad we had those extra units there to provide that water like right then and there. Now we have 336 units in Haiti altogether now. Wow. Now there was and no electricity, so what power Look at that. that. That that one right there answers Motorcy the picture. Oh. Um, you see the little motorcycle behind that? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm running it. I'm literally running. You see, your timing was perfect <laughs> with that question, Jane. I'm literally running the unit. And then this is in Pakistan following that big earthquake. We had the opportunity to minister with so many Muslims and bring them clean water. Many times yeah. they would say, who sent you here? Why are you here? And I would say, well, your prophet talked all about him. It was Jesus that sent me here. And Jesus said, if you're thirsty to bring you clean water, I love that oh. picture. <laughs> oh, wow. So we've been all over the world just bringing clean water, bringing good news, bringing yeah. joy and life. That will, that will turn into the living water. Amen. Amen. Now, one of these units costs over two thousand dollars. That's right, twenty-three hundred dollars, and the way it is, the way it's delivered, it'll deliver about twenty thousand gallons of water before you need to replace a little ceramic filter for about thirty dollars. And each filter gives you ten thousand gallons of water. So you know, yeah. if you've bought water lately, it's about a dollar a gallon. <laughs> so it's a deal. It's a good deal. <laughs> it's a real good deal. Wow. Now, where do you get the money to do this? 
We get the money from people who have a heart to help us. And just like Aldrich and James sang that song from the rooftops, you know, that song has been fulfilled in their lives because this young man travels the world and proclaims Jesus. Well, in the same way as we go and we tell people about, about the needs in the world, not only believers, believers and unbelievers, we have one man who is actually Jewish who funded over 200 units to go into Haiti. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> so the Lord touches people's yeah. hearts and that in turn empowers us and it kind of shoots us out into the world to bring clean water. Amen. So that's how it happens. You know, if you're watching this, and what is what one of these costs? Twenty three hundred dollars. Twenty three hundred dollars. If you're watching this and you've got some money put aside for a rainy day, this is the rainy day. <laughs> and you just call them Air Mobile Ministries. Amen. And they'll see that they're not only manufacturing, because they mm -hmm. manufacture them, but they take them there, too. So, 20-some hundred dollars, plus the transportation that you provide. Yep, yep, yep. And, and it, it's such a joy. You know, Bob, we've done many things together, shown the Jesus film, preached, been on done many interviews, but I'll tell you, bringing clean water to thirsty people is yeah. just the coolest thing. <laughs> it's just the coolest thing. When Jesus comes back in Matthew 25, and he sets up the kingdom, separates the sheep and the goats, the very first words out of his mouth. Now this is pretty important. What did he say? He tells the disciples, he said, I was hungry, I was thirsty. Mm -hmm. And you gave me to drink. That's right. <laughs> so when we bring clean water to but people. But you bring the living water, too. We bring Amen. the living water. <laughs> we do with joy. It, it's one of the most exciting things we've ever done, Bob. Mm. Cindy, what part do you have? <laughs> well, when a disaster strikes, I'm, I'm usually right there putting on my travel vest on saying, Joe, we got to go. We got to go to India or we have to go to Thailand. I love to go with him. Now, do you get requests to come, or do you watch the news and see that a cyclone hit or typhoon, whatever? Jane, that's a good question. Both. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone is different. Mm -hmm. um, when the big cyclone hit in Burma or Myanmar and no one could get in, God made a way for us. Mm -hmm. We were wow. one of the first mission organizations to get in. Yeah. I mean, the State right? Department called me and said, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. It <laughs> God opens doors like you can't believe. Because this is a mission that's so close to his heart. Yes. Yes. I mean, when he comes back, Absolutely. he can talk about all kind of things. One of the first words out of his mouth is, I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. That's right. Amen. So God, God just makes the way, Jane, and every story is different. You know, sometimes we get a request, sometimes we just go. People say, where are you going to stay? How do you get around? Who are your contacts? We say, we just go. And, and God makes a way where there God seems to be no way. way. He's time. the way maker. <laughs> yeah, he is. And it doesn't make any difference if you sleep in a mud hut or... In Remember the tent? Remember the tent oh. in, in, in Indonesia? We were there and <laughs> earthquakes were still happening and Cindy oh, very, very wisely would not sleep in a building because we had seen tens of thousands of buildings completely oh. flattened to the ground. Yeah. So we had brought our own tents and everything and while we were there, we had a 6.9 quake wow. and we were, mm -hmm. we were only about 100 yards from the ocean and we didn't know if another tsunami was gonna come. So ah. some, sometimes it gets a little dicey. On well, this last trip into the Philippines, we slept in some pretty strange places. Yeah, too. I remember in Japan, we slept like logs in a row, a bunch of relief workers on the floor together. <laughs> and it was freezing cold. So cold. Oh, yeah. Biggest snowflakes I've ever seen. A snowflake would fall and hit you in the face and cover <laughs> half your face. I've never wow. seen snowflakes like that. Oh it's my true. Goodness. Northern Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe with some nuclear fallout or something. Well, yeah. I just wanted to say this b before we go on any further that. Uh, extreme if you've seen extreme makeover four years ago they built a house for you and not only built a beautiful home knowing that you were a pilot they took your airplane which desperately needed 
<laughs> are really? we an <laughs> really, yeah. I mean, and they just uh, blessed you yes, they immensely. Did. And it was ironic because our house was destroyed by a flood with water while we were doing water purification and helping the Haitians. And they picked up our story. And yes, you were living in a little home. trailer. Yes. Yeah. yeah, six people, two dogs, and a 35-foot motorhome. <laughs> oh, my. Ty Pennington <laughs> found out about it, and he just said, that's not right. <laughs> he Aww. said, these people bring clean water. We have to do something about that. And boy, did they ever, didn't yeah. they? People often ask me. We saw that me, program. Oh, I'm so yeah, glad. People will say, what was it really like? You know, what was it, what was it really like? And I have one word for it. It, it was better. Better. <laughs> what you saw on TV was good. Yes, what happened behind the scenes was better. Oh, we're so happy they, for you. Yeah. Thank you. Unbelievable. God really we're so you. blessed. Yeah. And we have an airplane in our house. <laughs> yes, I saw that too. In the house. We have yes, a 22 yeah. foot section of a 737 Bob in our living room. We need to have you and Jane over for dinner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd love to, to see, see it this. in person. In person, yeah. Does it have an engine? Uh, no, no, no. no. But, but, but you'll love the way it's configured. Wow, <laughs> oh, that's great. Yep. Well, we're going to take a break, and then Aldrich and James are coming back to sing a song, Ocean. To contact Good Life hosts Bob and Jane DeAndre, please send an email to deandre at ctntv.net. You can also write to The Good Life at Christian Television Network, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. To find out more online, please log on to www.ctnonline.com and click on The Good Life. Grace abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. The feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you never fail, and you won't stop. Without 
Isn't so my savior? Superiorly, you wear my trust. Is without borders, and you walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be. Stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my Presence of my Savior, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Wherever you would call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made strong. The presence of my Rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. All we can sing. And we're going to ask you boys to come over here and uh, be with us on the set. Uh, and I know you've got a lot of questions, as we do. Where did they come from? Where, how did they get here? And, uh, and where do they live and all that? Um, mm -hmm. And you know a lot of those questions, but I don't. If you can go ahead and bring them on. Okay. <laughs> good job. Good Beautiful. job. So good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now tell me, Aldrich, where uh, you come from, General Santos. 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 Mm -hmm. well, what does your home look like? You must have a big mansion. <laughs> no, not actually. Um, it's actually just a simple home, but um, it's a, a small compound, and um, my mother's uh, siblings also live there and their families. Uh huh. So it's just how many rooms? <laughs> it's a lot of rooms because I and Aldrich has the same house. Mm -hmm. Oh, like you a live a with her? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Well, when did you start singing, Aldrich? Um, I started singing when I was four. My mother just discovered me um, singing in my crib, <laughs> <laughs> singing praise, praise and worship songs, Aww. because um, my both of our parents are pastors. That's wonderful. So you met Jesus at a young age? Yes. Has he just been everything to you and transformed your life? And yeah. You know, that gift comes from him, and I know you know that because the anointing is on you, both of you. James, how did you learn the guitar? Uh, inside the church, because uh, I am a, a music minister, so I always do serving the Lord through music, and that's awesome, yeah. awesome feeling. 
And you just learned by taking a guitar to church and? Yeah, to the church. Wow. Finding out the notes and? Mm. Hearing, hearing some music and then adding hearing it. some Playing by ear. extra. Playing by mm -hmm. ear. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you must have had a lot of professional help. Haven't you? Voice Walter? lessons? No, <laughs> I don't have any voice lessons. <laughs> <laughs> None. God's anointing. This is a gift. <laughs> <laughs> a true gift from yes, the Lord. Amen. What brought you to America? Um, well, we were d um, invited by the Hersons family for their Christmas um, fundraising concert. And then uh, it was awesome being there. Lots of um, their friends. We knew a lot of new people. Uh-huh. Now, when you came to the States, what amazed you the most mm -hmm. about <laughs> the United States? Well, since this is our th uh, since this is our third time in the U.S., um, what amazed us the most is mm. the the genuine smile of the people here and um, the warm welcome they gave us. Oh. <laughs> because of the talent that you have. Yeah. Well, well, we're glad to hear that. Now, tell us about your schooling and. All that. Where, where do you go to school? And if you're here, how do you go to school? Oh well, it, it was it's a hard time for me to balance um, studying and singing, especially after when we went to Allen. After that, um, there's uh, lots and lots of weeks where. Um, from Mondays to Fridays, I go to school, and then Saturdays, I, I we flew back to the capital city, and then on Monday, we, we go back to our city again. So it's kind of hard for us, but um, for me personally, I when I have um, guestings or what, I just um, make a letter, and then just go up with my lessons when I when I go back to school. Double work. Mm -hmm. Double yeah. work. <laughs> now, on the Ellen show, I saw you get a wonderful <laughs> piano. Yeah, I've, I've yeah, um, I've never got to have my piano lessons le lessons yet because I'm um, so busy with uh, studies. <laughs> <laughs> He's so busy. <laughs> Does it stop you from playing it? No, actually, um, I have no proper lessons yet. <laughs> no, but you still... He's playing a little bit. <laughs> you know how to play a little bit. It's amazing how God gives you the talent to do that. Yes. Um, what questions do you have? I wanted to ask James when you met Jesus. I know he's the one that's opened these doors mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. yeah. And given you the gifts and talents and... I just wonder, were you very young when you met Jesus, or were you a little older? I know you're 19. Yeah, uh, I met Jesus in the church because, like what Aldrich said, uh, our both our parents are pastors, so I was like, uh, every evening uh, we do the dev devotionals, and I think I was nine years old when I received Christ as my savior. Mm -hmm. Nine years old. Mm -hmm. Great. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, do you speak English at home? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, you speak English so well. So well tell somebody, uh, Aldrich, about Jesus in your native tongue. Okay. Speak in, speak in your Filipino language and tell, tell someone about Jesus right now. Like, like, tell someone how they can accept Jesus. But say it in your language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? In yeah. Your, uh, in your own national language? language? Yes. 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 Language. Yeah. Okay. Any language is yours. Ang, ang, ang Diyos ay mabuti at siya hindi nagbabago. Wow. 
All right. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that That's means. That's a concise gospel right there. <laughs> and, what was, and what was the translation of that, Aldra? God is good and he never changes. Oh, Amen. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> Joe, uh, there are others. You have a camera over here. There are others that don't know Jesus. Would you like to lead someone that doesn't know Jesus? No. Oh, and we need to dismiss the boys. No, well, mm. we could dismiss him now. Yeah. Okay, because they're, they're, they're going to mm -hmm. close out with another song. But okay. you, you got about two and a half minutes. I think of TNT, mm -hmm. Romans 10, 9 and 10. And basically, yeah. it's 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 that we just so need Jesus, and that and that and that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, lead into prayer. If you confess Jesus mm -hmm. with your mouth and believe you in your heart. If you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. Yes, I mean. And the gospel, the gospel is, it's, it's simple enough for a child to understand it. And yet the greatest theologians in all the world stumble over the simplicity and the beauty of the gospel. That's right. And it's God's love that reaches out to us. It's the Holy Spirit that draws us. And someone that is listening even right now, if their heart is, 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 is hungry and warm, that's the Holy Spirit drawing. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that all we have to do we can't work for it. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And Amen. that is the gospel. That is the gospel of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you have anything to add to that, Cindy? Just this is a, uh, the Christmas season, or this is a time uh, when Christ is um, showing himself to us. He extended his hands to us, and we just need to receive them, and so, so willingly Amen. wrap, wrap them. Wrap That's them right. Mm -hmm. And if you're one of those that says, I really don't know how to pray, you just say this, Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Friend, if you mean it, Jesus Christ will come into your heart, and your life will be transformed. He loves you very much, and he's got an awesome plan for your life. Amen. We're going to uh, have a closing song by Aldrich and Jane. Yes. It's simply entitled, We Are. We are. i 